definition, a composer of songs. On today's podcast, we're talking to William Cronin. William is an Irish singer-songwriter with an alternative folk acoustic sound. In the last 12 months, William has received publishing deals with expressive artists and Music of the Sea publishing companies, both based in Los Angeles, who have placed songs in some of the biggest TV shows and movies. He has also been a semi-finalist in the 2020 and the 2021 UK songwriting contests. As William continues to grow his catalogue of songs with his unique romantic style, he's definitely someone you need to keep an ear out for in the future. We hope you enjoy our conversation with William. So my first question for you would be, uh, can you tell me about your first or favourite instrument, something that drew you to actually playing guitar in the first place? My first instrument was a gift for my wife. And it's when you come to those Christmas gifts, you just don't know what to get her anymore. Herself would be singing every song that was there. And I said, maybe because she sings, it'd be a good idea to get her a guitar. You bought it for her, is it, initially? Or? I bought her the guitar. And I remember on the day I gave her the guitar, I said, this is how you hold it. You put this hand here. And then, and she would hold, I don't know, it's a bit like this. I'd take it back off her again. And <laughs> then she would try. But... I think she saw the passion that day. And I remember, I think she told me, take it home with me again. <laughs> and I was delighted. Do you think secretly you, you kind of had an ambition in your head, but you were transferring yes. it to somebody else? Well, it was like showing a seal that lived inside in a room, water. I didn't know that I liked the guitar that much until yeah. I started strumming. It was like you'd hear Homer Simpson's when he bought Marge a bowling ball for Christmas. I felt yeah. a bit like that after, but it was interesting when I had that guitar pre the gift, I found myself uh, naturally oh, vocalizing to play. And what was mm. great is I really didn't know what I was doing at the time. At the age of 18, did you start thinking about songwriting? I actually never did. Never. It so when, when did I this idea around songwriting um, materialize for you? It was literally at that point, sitting at the edge of my bed, when I put my fingers on the cards and I went, oh, like it felt natural just to vocalize as I was doing that. And that was the first of it. And that's at 18 years of age, which is, I suppose, different when you hear the stories of songwriters. They might say I started at 12 or some people say I started singing at three and I wasn't a singer either at the time. So that literally was the thing. So that's at 18 years old. As an 18 year old who was kind of drawn to the guitar and started to, as you said, vocalize as you picked it up. And obviously there was this kind of innate, this innate feeling that you should you, you to, to create something original. How long then did it take for you to actually write a song? And as a follow up from that, I'm just interested. When did you share that first song or did you ever share that first song? Because I suppose an 18 year old, you can imagine now the mind of an 18 year old. I was moving around the house and I was like a person that was trying to do something illegal. I was going to the furthest part of the house so no one would hear me. I'd be making sure there was no one over me in case they heard me singing. Uh, so I, I was no way confident. There was nothing about it that was about sharing it. I wouldn't dare. So it was pure, uh, just craft. Now, I, there was a thing in me where I used, at the time, I used to love photography and garden design. So kind of craft and design and creating and looking in hindsight, they're all connect, connected. The photographer is trying to capture something. The songwriter is trying to catch something. They're both very much connected. So I suppose I picked up on the creative side of that there, but there was no way that I was going to let people hear me sing a song. So it was purely for um, just this creative experimentation of putting voicing to this. And actually, that actually people who often say to me after, you know, would you sing up? Would you sing up? And I think it was because I started singing low inside in, in rooms for people not to hear me is where I got that low vocal um, tone mm. came from. Because if I was confident and expressive, I would have been trying to expanding my lungs and practicing for years and years and getting the vocal level up. So 
Um, I often hear singers like Ray Lamontaine, and you often think that lovely low husky thing. You can't train to do that. It could be just due to circumstances. So, okay, was, great. Yeah. So you you never went through a phase of learning other people's songs. That is another thing which is kind of peculiar, I suppose. And I look at it looking back now because one of the things that's recommended is you learn other people's songs. That's that's part of the course of songwriters. Where I did not, I th- I found learning other people's songs was almost a waste of time when you could be doing this. And that's continued. I might devil, but uh, and then sometimes I do, or what I would do is if I heard a very good song, this is actually one of the things I would do to write a song sometimes, just to get a little hint of something. I'm not very good for playing other music. So if I heard a good song that really got me, got me here, I would listen to the song, turn it off straight away, and try to recreate what I heard. And by my poor guitar work and this this poor ear training, I'd often come up with something which is actually totally different to the song I was listening to, but it was the key that got me going and got that deep sensation. Oh, I'd love if it sounded a bit like this. And you play the two songs and they're completely separate. So that's like a, that's what they call good stealing. I'm not trying to copy anything, but I'm just like that kind of vibe in the song. So is your process music first and then lyrics or how do you start? If if someone heard me creating a song, I think they would nearly call some emergency services because it doesn't <laughs> sound, it doesn't, it doesn't sound <laughs> like I'm well. Sometimes uh, you know, it would be literally it's literally coming from anywhere. And I would move around the house and one of the best places in this house to write a song, uh, as you know, There's I've said it many times. Sing in is the, the shower, bathroom. the you bathroom. Know, everything everything just sounds better in the bathroom. Everything sounds good. And that whole, you know, you talking about, you know, people would call, like you'd be waiting for people like, to call someone because they sound, you sound unwell. It's because you're creating and experimenting and seeing what sounds fit. And, it, you know, I, I've, I've said this to Ken, this lovely phrase that I say to students all the time in, in, in when I'm teaching about like when I'm trying to get them to be like creative and to open up and experience um, new things and step outside their comfort zone is that there is no creativity without vulnerability and what you're Absolutely. describing there is just being vulnerable in an effort to actually mm-hmm. get to that creative spark. And within that phonics of sound I'll call it if that's the correct word what will often happen is I would say oh that sounded like I just said to the moon and back and I said god that sounded very like I said that and that could be your guiding light for the song if that one line came good or pre the song I could have a good core idea so it sounds Um, like it's a kind of a combination so of music and lyrics for you really and sometimes just even listening to a song can get you in the right frame of mind where you're really in the creative because you've heard something so good that you 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 and, then, and put it away and didn't go just it just brings you to the studio it brings you to the guitar it's all about picking up the guitar having a mess on the guitar getting it wrong not knowing the chords others would say differently but I remember, I remember something I heard lately by um Noel Gallagher in Oasis. And he said he hadn't a clue of the cards and, you know, he wasn't sure where his fingers were going, but it was, it was that unknown that created the, the, the mystery to the whole thing. And then it, it, it comes, it comes together. So, I, and actually, interestingly, just there on, from what I was saying about, you know, the phonics and that, that voicing, and then all of a sudden so, something comes together. Uh, there was this program. It was, a, it was that moment along my songwriting journey, which I think is is a journey of learning and then getting better than you were six months ago. But I was it was on Sky Arts and it was called, I think, The Song. And they interviewed fa- famous people. And one of the people interviewed was describing exactly what I thought I was messing with. The messing I thought I was doing, he was saying how he created a song. And I said, wait on a second, maybe I'm doing something right here. Fall in love was easy Like a breath 
The only sounds I hear were the words you said. Simple things wove with simple thread, and every stitch a moment in my head. A lot of people, songwriting is such a solitary journey that we don't realize how common our kind of challenges are as songwriters which is one of the nice things about the podcast as well you know shows the commonality or, or you know around what songwriters are trying to do in terms of um, their own process or developing their own craft when you start to write a song now you're down the road as a songwriter you've performed some of your songs you've got a handle on some of your songs you've publishing deals with some of your songs how do you start a song these days is it the same each time is it just inspiration and y- you just take off what tools do you use for example mm-hmm. ever before mobile phones I bought a dictaphone and I'm sure I must have looked crazy walking my way to work just talking into the yeah. dictaphone like some lunatic which I probably am but like you know now it's like I don't look too mental just talking into my phone (laughs) you know Mm -hmm. so what what kind of tools do you use to help you remember because I know that if I don't get that melody or that lyric down recorded it could be gone so it's interesting you said because I think you're you hit these junctions along the way and I'd say I believe I'm at one now because when I picked up the guitar that day and I was playing that song that was like a sad love song it was it was in my naturally to come up me was either a love song or sad love song but it's been a long time I'm loved out I'm done I kind of I want to move away from the the, I'd like to move and and explore something different I'm sure that's the journey of a songwriter where you do something a lot and you kind of go all right I've a lot of that done and I enjoy doing it I love creating the moment where someone you know that moment where you just feel like you're in love or you fall in love so creating that in in a in a song is that someone can journey there listening to your song i think is something special uh and when people it's very important so at, at the moment i'm at the crossroads you think of all these things before you start the song and to me a lot it's got to be about simplicity. I'm at, I'm at the stage, yes, you started simplicity. And I think I'm back full circle again. I think simplicity is a huge thing. I think the people react to your song means an awful lot. There's such a thing as reaction to a song. And it's there. You can't pretend it's not there or make up and say, oh, I think this is going to be a good song. It's either there or it isn't. And like what I call a reaction is when you sing a song, and someone stops doing something they're doing, someone turns up the volume to listen to a song, somebody is is, is moving their leg listening to a song, or someone says, uh, play that again. That's what I call a reaction to a song. If it's not there, you could pretend it is, but it's not, it needs to be. And I think some of the things that must be very important is the core idea of a song has to be there. The way I used to craft my songs before, I used to be very organic and just let it come up. Now I'm kind of thinking before the song, I need the core idea of this song to be a good song because it's very important. A title or just a story idea? It it could come from a line. It could come from a thought. But when it does, when you get that thought or you hear that line, it's not just the idea. I go, oh my God, that's a really good idea. So it hit me. It, it, It turned my senses up. And I think that's the, the that's very important. If you don't have that, you could be lacking something the whole way. Could be lacking that little bit of magic in the song. So that that ties into performing a song and the the feedback you get from that. Now I know you ha- you haven't always been performing songs and performing live. So that recent development for you is that something that has improved your songwriting or changed it in terms of before you're probably writing by yourself in a room and you might get feedback from friends and family but to play something in in an audience and maybe something you don't expect to get a reaction gets a bigger reaction and something you expect to get a big reaction doesn't and it surprises you it's one thing you can never control you can't control the reaction you can write the lyrics you can change the melody but you can't control how people react to your song. And that's the bit that's a, it's a great mystery. 
It can be a frustrating mystery when you think you've got a great song and there's no reaction. And then you have a song that you just threw together and all of a sudden saying, that's a fantastic song. And you're going, really? And it's a myth you're kind of going, how? I don't think, you know, yourself, but when you see it, it's great. And that journey did change for me. Uh, the, the songwriting club was a huge part. That was a big deal for me to take the leap and say, look, if I'm taking this seriously, I do need more than just the bedroom and the book on the edge of the bed and just doing this, it's definitely going to help everything I do to just to progress and do it more. And when I started doing the songs, my idea was I write the songs, sing the songs, I get a singer to sing the songs. That was the initial idea. There was no yeah. way in the world I could have imagined myself singing the songs. And how do you out critique though, William, when you don't think it's critique that you don't necessarily want to hear? And I know that like, you know, the songwriter club might you know after a while it feels like quite a safe space to be vulnerable and to work up the kind of courage to kind of say well actually I think if you did this when you don't agree with it or you don't feel it how do you deal with that like there's certain things on a journey of a songwriter which to me could take a journey of a songwriter could be 20 years and you just have to take that in in if you don't you seriously are not moving forward. If you don't challenge yourself, I don't think you're progressing. And if you were to take songwriting seriously, you've got to take rejection and you've got to take critique as learning. Yes, there's a day where you kind of go, that's what he thinks, you know what I mean? Where you kind of go, but then what does happen, there's something very amazing. Once you share a song, like in the, the songwriting club, before you share it, you have a sense of your song. And after you, the minute you share a song and you're coming back down the road and you listen to your song and you go, oh yeah, I hear it now as well. Mm -hmm. It's just, it needed to be spread around and for somebody to taste it. And then you, you learn something and you do that many times. And now at the moment, critique at this stage in juncture you could say anything, you will not offend me because there's something great about songwriting. You could just start another song. I could totally <laughs> turn around and start another song. You do, you know, it's not like you're someone's after ruining your life because they, this song that was going to change your life. You know that you, you, you finish your song, you can start another song. In, and you can't in. please everyone. It's going to be like, that's the way it is. You don't like it. That's okay. It's not for you. Yeah. Having said that, you mentioned moving on to another songs how are you on the half finished half finished project half finished songs do you have many of them hanging around and what do you do with them i have loads <laughs> and i have yeah the, there's something special that happens before your head enters the world i think i get up and there's that time where you put on the kettle and you have the cup of tea and you, you come into into this space here and you pick up a guitar your head has not been um uh, nothing has entered your head. You're still in a half sleepy state mm. and there's something special that you do here. I would record all that stuff now, no matter what it is. And when I'm going to work, I with the Bluetooth now, you see you can just play it like if you're listening to the radio. Uh, so this is this guy who's half asleep and he's doing something. And the guy who's going to work has got a coffee in him and he's more alert and he's like the editor. And he's listening going, oh, one second now just rewind that small but that was quite good but the sleepy head did not hear that he was only messing but the editor in the van will he'll spot it and what i'll do too what i've noticed is that he'll play coming home as well and if it's really good you'll notice it you'll have a, a, a reaction you would press pause you would press rewind to me that's a reaction if i don't get it now i've learned after listening let's say six times if it does nothing to you press delete get rid of it because it, 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 it's not going to happen if it's, you know, it's not going to react, then I won't want to write it. I need something. I need that, that reaction to write a song. I think I heard Elton John um, is like, if it's not kind of happening almost immediately for him, if he, he's like, it's not happening. Move on. Um, and, I, and then I know some people who'll hold on to a bit for like six and seven years and come back to it. I don't know where where are you on that? You're still well, if you if you that last that song you were referring to earlier on, that song that I placed my fingers on the G and I wrote a song back then and I was playing mm -hmm. cards I didn't even know. I finished that this year. <laughs> so maybe don't yeah. delete. 
But I, but then again, I wouldn't delete that because when I used to listen to that song, I had a, a kind of a, an instinctual a reaction. reaction. Yeah. I liked that. I liked there was there was something in that, so that was going nowhere. But it got finished. Started when I was eighteen, and I went back to it when I was forty six. Some people say doing another activity by say going for a walk or driving the car. That sometimes if you get stuck in a song and you're trying to finish a part and it's not coming naturally that there's some part of the brain that gets activated by doing something else that's a bit mundane, like say driving is, is perfect or walking and, and the solution tends to come for them. Is that, does that happen to you as well? It would actually, it's, it's strange. This is where I never taught this to anybody. There's a road where I cross when I'm picking up one of my boys and I cross down and every time I'm on that road, I get a good idea. The road is straight. Mm. The, it, it goes from one point to another point and I keep noticing when I'm on that road it might be because it's so straight that my mind doesn't have to think about other car and the road is also only one vehicle wide so your so, brain can switch off and go into automatic and I think so I, I think there's something in that where yeah. ideas can seep in when because you're, you're engaged in a different part of your brain your brain is still doing something but it's kind of its guard is down, and something else gets the the command and like an, an idea. Do you watch The Big Bang Theory at all? I know. It's a, an American sitcom. It's finished now. There's a character called Sheldon Cooper. He's a genius, and he's struggling with some theory on string theory or something. He's like um, an astrophysicist or something like that, and um, he goes to wash um, test tubes um, and equipment in his girlfriend's labs because doing something mundane um, unlocks mm. that other part of you. And I believe Einstein and other kind of geniuses used to do it. So there's definitely something in it, you know, yes. it's like lightning strikes and you just have to kind of try and bottle it before you forget it, you know. And you've got to record. And why, what I've noticed, why I noticed that road was because the junction at the other end of that road, my phone is up on, in front of me there. And I keep noticing that I was pressing record there and I would say a line or into it. And I kept I said, I keep doing that here, right at this junction. So whatever that road. And now I look forward to going on that road. There's a song in that, William, actually. Maybe <laughs> I should just keep there. going round and yeah. round and yeah. round. And we'll get a song out of it. <laughs> ask you in terms of um, you mentioned performing and the feedback you get do you think if you have if you don't perform or if you hadn't done that that your songwriting wouldn't be uh, wouldn't have progressed or improved it, no there there's a there's a there's a huge learning in performing whether you're good at it or not and i i i noticed things watching other people in the group just being there watching the performance and watching the reaction from the audience to what they love to hear. And actually, when I used to come home from any performance, I would always write down just a few notes of what I thought worked. And then if I was performing, I just flick through those pages and I go, all right. And I kept, I remember writing down simplicity. The word simplicity came up a lot. Um, if you were having a, like a song is a lyrical conversation, and if I'm just going to purge all this story through too much, you're not going to hear what I'm saying. Uh, but I used just watching a simplistic song really affecting the listener. Another thing I learned was that if the song is honest and it, a person gives his whole emotional as best mm. he can, the vocal performance is forgiven. Yeah. If you're trying to be vocally brilliant with your burados and everything else, 
and you're trying to do all these uh, somersaults and stuff, but if the mm -hmm. song has got no heart and no honesty, yeah, eh, I take it or leave it. Whereas the guy who's just struggling on a guitar and he's giving it all, and you can hear the honesty and the truth, I'm, I'm, I'm all in. I'm really yeah. there. How do you define simplicity, William? And I'm asking that because I, when I listen to your songs. I have to listen to them a few times, a lot of the time, to figure what's he's trying to say there. I I, I never crack. I like. Yeah, oh, I think you're quite cryptic, and I'm like, what's he trying to say there? And then I'm like, oh, and I love that. I wish I was more like that myself, but I'm not. So how do you define simplistic when I, I as a songwriter, I'm looking at you and thinking, oh god, it's really deep. Yeah, I think I think my journey is, is going to become more simplistic and less cryptic. Like I have a real interest in film and TV and things that they use in those. And part of the learning there was when when you when you're on an emotion, whatever emotion you're on, you must kind of really stick to that emotion and don't veer off too too far. And that's a form of simplicity in itself. Not to, be, to confuse the listener and thinking, oh, is he happy now? I thought he was sad two lines back. Yeah. Uh, where am I now? And I think. Uh, once you confuse the listener, they say you lose the listener. And are you trying to get so, away from love songs, William? You do them really well. Yeah, well, this is it. So I, I did the the news. The new song that I'm singing is not a sad long, a long. It's a not so sad love song. So it's going to have to be by degrees. It just <laughs> naturally comes out of me. So it's yeah. not so sad love song. And the core idea of that song was there's a line of broken hearts around the car. That was the, what came up in the idea is that everybody must relate to it as well. We've all been in the queue. We've all looked at those faces and you think of all the thoughts and the stories going through. Them. So that's where my job now will be to stick there, not to confuse the listener. But I think that's the first line that's coming is the, there's a line of broken hearts around the corner. So, and that will be, and again, it's a very simplistic idea that you and I, everyone can relate to it. And hopefully when it's, 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 it's all, and it's all in pieces. Like if you, if you heard that song, now do I have it recorded? I've got, like, you'd say, are you a madman? But what will happen is it'll all come together. And then I, I won't stop putting on paper for a long time. This purging of um, lyrical mumble with good lines in there. And it's the ones where I react to it will be the pieces of the jigsaw that will come together. And hopefully it'll be a good song, I think. But if it does not, that's grand we'll write another song. You just think you're you're in love. You're very happy. <laughs> and so you gravitate to those love songs because it's yeah, just, like, can you, like, I, you know, I know Ken tends to write, he can actually put himself in other people's kind of, you know, stories and write the song from their point that's of view. That's what I was going to ask, fact or fiction. I, I think you all, they should always, always, if actually in every single song I have, there is always a core of truth. It could be deeply in there, but I've often thought that there is a core of truth in every single one of them, but it's almost like the artist that signs his name. Do you know the way, isn't Banksy does it? He leaves yep. clues in there. Yeah, there's, there's a core of truth in every song. I, I don't think I could perform the song and give it all if it was just uh, make. And I think uh, humans are, are are very clever. If, if you meet someone and they, they come down the road and they tell you about this thing that happened up the road, you kind of get a hint and go, I don't think he's telling the truth. So I'd be very, I think I'd be very aware of that, that it is a core, that the core idea of the song is, has gone true. Like there's this thing that bothers me. This is me venting now. <laughs> is when you hear a song, this, this gets to me, is when the first line of the song is, I've got nothing to say. It was like, oh, you know, that, it, and it's in many songs where I've no words, I've nothing to say. It's, it could be because when they started writing the song, they had nothing to say. They couldn't words say don't come easy to me. <laughs> yeah, well, that's a good song. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But that whole song is about not mm. being able to express himself. It can be a good idea, mm. but it depends on how you execute it. And the villagers have another, and I'm, now I'm, I'm contradicting myself. Uh, it's, I think it's called When Nothing Arrives, and it's so good. And actually, now I'm going to contradict, contradict myself again. The Isn't the Bruce Springsteen the one? Oh, he's one of these songs, and it was, it was born out of just not needed to write a song because he had nothing coming. Can I ask you, in terms of uh, just tying back a little bit to you were saying, we said you were your songs are quite cryptic. Mm. And it seems to me that 
if you tie back to your original getting into music and playing guitar, that you were kind of hiding it a bit, a bit, a bit mm-hmm. hiding behind the guitar and, and kind of hiding away from people. Do you think the whole part of being cryptic is an extension of that, that you're being cryptic because it's a way of not quite people picking up immediately what's going on in your head and, and maybe that's something mm-hmm. that over time will will get less cryptic as you get more confident or I, less worried about that? I just, I suppose it's, it's the way it comes out of me. But the, I think cryptic and the hidden voice, it, it, that suits the love song because sometimes people are in love, but they don't say it straight or they yeah. fall in love with someone, but they can't say it to them or they're, they fall out of love and they can't, you know, there's, there's this thing, there's this conversation going on around in all of our heads all the time. And it's just not a, a straightforward story or conversation. So maybe it's something to do with that. I don't know. Um, but it's just the way that it comes. But every line, uh, when, when the line comes, as cryptic as it may be, if, if it just, if it hits nice, you'd be often wondering if a line is right or not. But when a line is really right, you don't question it. You just know you wouldn't touch it. From that point, if, if there was something personal a line came up that was quite personal would you think twice about using that line if you say oh this is a bit too personal or you know somebody will hear this or i know it's about them or you know is is there a line that you draw there i think that would have been the early songwriter would have taught that and but the later songwriter me knows that that's a huge mistake vulnerability is the great if we were to sit down at a cafe and i was to have a conversation with someone i was to hide all my my feelings and everything else it would be a boring conversation yeah i'd agree i think it's wrong to censor yourself as a songwriter Mm -hmm. and i and i would agree that it is the early songwriter uh you know or the songwriter who doesn't want to might be very vulnerable from the get-go but doesn't want to share that with anyone else because it's like it's Mm -hmm a bit on the nose and it's a bit painful and it's a bit raw but it, it, it's that it's that process of learning to kind of well, I've written it now I like it and let's just give it a life because yeah. songs at the end of the day they're they're not a song till someone hears them you know and f- funnily a, a good song what happens is the listener sees more of themselves yes. in the song <laughs> Yeah, they're then, not worried about you at all. It's when people find themselves in your song is they connect to it, but it's yeah. their story. It becomes yeah, their story. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Could I ask about, um, I suppose, moving on from that, um, You've, I, I know you've done some collaboration. How have you found that collaborating with other songwriters and kind of remaining true to your own style and voice within that collaboration? Or are you kind of like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to... Um, hear a song that sounds nothing like me. I, I I have a feeling that the best songs that will be written out of me will come out of a collaboration. I'd, I'd love to collaborate, but I'm wondering will people be able to collaborate with me? Um, it excites me when I hear someone else in the room and, and you just, it, 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 it's, it's, it's exciting and, and there's things bouncing off each other's heads and, I, 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 it does, I, we don't do much and I think we do, should do it a lot more, but there's this relationship thing and there's this vulnerability feeling that people have to get through before they get there. I'm sure over national, there is no song written unless it, it's a collaboration. Yeah, we're looking at modern yeah. songs now and it's like five, six songwriters on a song. And it's because if, if, if someone was to build a skyscraper and they were to do it on their own, then they could be false. But if you had 10 engineers on that job, that's a better skyscraper. That's a safe skyscraper. You have too many cooks too, William. <laughs> yes, maybe so. But that's, I suppose it's about right, finding the right collaboration. Yeah, with the people yeah. That you, and the people, good, sometimes, a good fit. Sometimes it's about going there and being the listener. Yeah. Somebody, a lot of a lot of writers say that. It's, it's, you know, you might get two top class songwriters put them in a the room and if the chemistry isn't there, it just doesn't work and then yeah. you could put a, a complete novice with a top songwriter and it just they just click so it it varies it's just a matter of trying with different people and seeing when it works and when it doesn't 
uh, what's your favorite song or your favorite song or like your favorite song by your favorite songwriter or are they the same person or I've been asked that before and I, I, I've, I've always taught my head it's I just like something that's good that that I connect to and there's a thing on every radio laptop and everything where you can press skip on to the next song and often I think I'll give a song 10 seconds so you've got like 10 seconds as a songwriter these days okay. to hook that in there. The first line of a song is so important in the year 2022 or to be three now to, that it's so important. You could lose someone there unless the artist was known. Yeah. And you you mm-hmm. knew something good was coming from this artist. It's going to be great. But to, to hook someone in, it often takes the, but there is something special happened when I started living listening to Gregory Aniskov, he, he, the way he just, the simplicity in the way he would strum the guitar and his songs, the, his lyrics are very cryptic too. They're like they're falling out of a book as if you shook a book and the lines just are falling, but each one emotionally are all connected. And it's that, that craft where sometimes I'm listening to these songs, I have not a clue what he's singing about at the time. But emotionally, I can connect with that song. Yeah. And I love that. It's really, that's where I get, it's almost like a hit. It's like when you take a drink or if you have, a, you taste something really nice and you meet that song. And I, that's the song that I play for the whole week. So as long as it's a good song and I get that hit. And I'd love to, I suppose that's what I'd like to do. I'd love to create where someone gets that in my song. I think I've achieved my job if I did it. Well, you definitely have with, you know, some of the songs you've written, um, for me anyway, I, you know, I definitely, I'm like, I like a sigh. <laughs> I'm like, oh. <laughs> yeah, you, had you just, yeah. you just, if you could feel like you just took something really good. Yeah. And it felt really good here. The last question that I would like us to finish with, what would be your top tip for any songwriters listening today? Well, there is, I think there's a confidence and a belief in yourself in the journey of the songwriting is a journey. It's not 10 songs that didn't go right for you. You have to pick up the guitar and you have to mess around with it. And all you need is the guitar and a recording device and you're there. That's it. You don't need any of the fancy things. You need the truth. You only need three or four chords. You don't <laughs> need to be technical you just that honesty and that connection and and that um and at this stage as i said at the beginning i'm gone back to simplicity yeah you know like yeah isn't that that that's a fa- is that a famous saying four chords and the truth it's, i think it's you said, three that. Chords. You said that that's, a, it? Nash, that's a nashville oh it's a, it's a nashville saying so that actually there you go hit the nail on the head it's country and western trope uh, well, can I ask you, um, what's the best part of finishing a song for you in terms of, is it having this thing that came together and it, it started as an idea and now it's finished? Or is it playing for your family or is it playing in public or doing a recording? What gives you the most satisfaction out of it? Yeah, because play, playing it out in public or anything, that really, that was, that's still not part of my thing. I know people... You know, gigging is part of the thing. Actually, if I never played in public at all, I do that out of, out of interest more than I want to just, uh, I know it's good for the songwriter. That's why I actually do that. Yeah. So, um, but there is something, there is something lovely when you're in the middle of a song because you're thinking this could be a great song. Often the potential of it. The potential, yes, the potential of it. And then there's the bit at the end, and oh my goodness, so many songs. It's that last line and those two words, and I can't bring that together. And it's almost like I'm putting myself into the zone. I could be down to one line, and my brain says to myself, what if you can never work this out? And then I'm almost like, I'm gone tense. And it, it, because I'm tense in my head, so that's where we have to literally go away from it. Is uh, the best part it. doing the jigsaw or finishing the jigsaw? Mm-hmm. I, I do like finishing it, but then the song is done. 
there's a bit of sadness with that too. I like the point where you go, that's finished. And like I said, there is this lovely moment in the middle where mm. it could potentially be the best song in the world because you have a good idea and you have, a, you know, you know, the potential is there. And mm. at the end, it might be quite what you would expected it could have turned out. But um, as, as some people describe their songs as being like their babies, it's a yeah. bit like that. They yeah. grow up and to some are go. successful and some aren't. And, but, you know, you love them all. Yeah. And, and actually, just as you mentioned it there now, one of the things in the song when it's finished, what I would do here, the studio, the studio, just a room really with its pieces, the door, I, when the song is finished, I'll open the door and it's usually closed and I'll play the song knowing that it's been heard. Mm. And my wife, that I, if you, where I started, you know, the way she sings songs. So I play the song maybe once or twice. And then, like a person waiting for an echo in a cave, I'm listening. And if I hear it humming it or singing part of it, I go, oh, that's good. Mm-hmm. So I would intentionally mm-hmm. sing it out. The old grey whistle for test. For the guy that wouldn't sing, hiding, now I'm opening the door and let it go through the house and then waiting for the echo back. Now, if, if she passes and she catches the door and closes, that's not a good sign. But if she goes, if she stops and goes, what are you playing there? Have I heard that one before? Mm-hmm. And the curious, they give them back to the reaction. So um, that, that's a ritual. You're literally opening the door and say, off you go into the world. Yeah, for his muse. <laughs> it's the beginning. <laughs> To see yeah. will it come back? Will I get an echo back? And it, it often does. Or if not, if my wife would say, Norin, she'd say, you play that one again, or just play that verse again. That's just the beginning to me then where I, it, it gives me the confidence then I'll say, right, I must bring this one to the songwriting club. I'll sing that at a gig because I'm getting that feedback. It's good. So what were your takeaways from today's conversation with um, William, Ken? What I found interesting about it was, uh, first of all, he's he's very interested in movies and television, and he seems to write songs for that medium. So he's very aware that if he has, say, too strong a storyline, that it's going to clash with the visuals of whatever project wants to pick up a song and have in the background. I, I think that's interesting because uh, not everyone writes in that kind of style. So well, he's not written to make an album per se. I think he sees his goal is writing for music and television. You're going to get different types of song yeah. coming out from an artist like that. Yeah, um, he makes conscious decisions about having things being, you know, generic. And he also has literally can imagine his song being played over certain scenes, yeah. which was, you know, interesting to hear as well. I haven't met somebody before who who writes for TV or for visuals. Uh, yeah. So it's interesting to hear that. And this was the other thing, it was um, when he spoke about driving on a particular road and he said he got an idea at as a crossroads because his brain was switched off to to, to actually songwriting and, and stuff was able to come in. So there was some good insight there. I think that might be a common thread among a lot of songwriters actually as well. You know, that I, you know, writing while driving and being kind of kind of zoned out so that you can actually let kind of inspiration hit and he's so poetic and you know the language is so flowery i I love that that i have to dig deeper into his lyrics to kind of what's happening in the song we mentioned at one stage about his lyrics being cryptic and maybe that's going to change over time but in a way that kind of makes these songs more interesting because you really have to listen intently to pick up on what he's saying and try and figure out where he's getting at and after a few listens you get there and it's it's very rewarding yeah and there are these the songs are easy to listen to as well i think even if you're not necessarily clued into what's the meaning behind it they're still singable and you know they've always got the hook and there you can tell there's a lot of thought put into the structure of the songs so yeah um I wish William the best of luck with his future careers. And I'm sure we'll be seeing one of his songs on the credits of a movie or TV series one of these days. I've no doubt you'll achieve that. Yeah. If 
you like this podcast, please follow us for future episodes. We'd love to hear from you and see you next time.